So now we have all the UI in the settings page. Next up is to actually style this UI. We're going to take it in chunks and the first thing I want to tackle is the buttons. We want to make a standard button for this icon button that we have. So where we've got all these icons, we have to do some more XAML and it's not pretty. We really just want to be able to say icon button, content and icon text. So let's just take a look at how we do that. So this is the thing we're talking about, how we do this, even though it's easy to do. Every time we want to put an icon in a button, we are then putting a stack panel inside the content, setting up all these labels, adding classes. There's a lot more code here than we really want there to be. The only thing we'll have to tackle is this is visible inside of the content is kind of unique in this instance. So we'll have to remember this and do something about it. We might still have to put a label inside the button just to attain this side menu. But for the other ones where, say for in here, the normal, we should just be able to use them as standard buttons. There's many ways we can do this. The first thing we want to do is make a folder and let's call it user controls, or even let's just call it controls. Now we can do, and you've seen me do in the previous Avalonia tutorials, templated controls. So I'll just make one and show you. And I'll show you the disadvantage of this as well. We'll call it icon button. And what this is going to do is make a new control. It's going to set up in the back end of the class off a templated control. It's going to add the XAML in the front. And you'll see in here, all it does is use a style selector to then find that button. And it sets the template up and replaces it with something else. Now this is okay, but if we take a look at the preview of this, we've probably got to compile to see this. We can see there now, we have a completely styleless, in a sense, control. It no longer looks like a button. One thing we could do to fix this is inside of here, we could override the style key and tell it that instead of being this icon button, it can take the key of a type of, say, button. If we do this now, this will be styled just like a button. But the problem there is there's no longer a way to really custom style this. So you'll have the button appearance, but then when we want to further customize it, you'll start running into issues where the styles don't apply because this selector no longer works. So you can already see we've lost the text because this selector no longer finds the icon button because this override means as part of the style selector, we've told it it's a button, not a control. So if we changed it back to something else like a button, then you'd see the control appears and injects this again, and then you've lost the style. So you can see it doesn't really work. The other downside, even if we styled the icon button exactly as we wanted, and we didn't do this kind of override, and you can see the other problem is we're not implementing a button. So there's no reference to this being a button. We can actually fix that by doing a button here, but again, you'll lose the style until you then add the override. So instead, what I'm going to do is we're going to still have an icon that overrides a button because that part is what we want. It really wants to inherit a button. But the way we do this style selector, we want to change. You'll find out things like radio buttons and checkboxes are all done with custom templates completely. So it replaces the whole template of the button each time. If we go to the source code of Avalonia, into source, then themes, fluent, then controls, we can find then all the default templates of each control. If we go to button, you can see what it does here is it creates a control theme. So this is what we want to use. We're going to replace the control theme. All we'll do is first, let's just click raw and copy this entire button template in a sense. We'll override all of this and paste it straight into the icon button. And you can see this is the Avalonia default button. Now, this isn't technically working because if we look up to the preview here, we have button, not our icon button. So we're not actually showing the icon button. I'm going to leave the stock buttons in, and I'm also going to add the icon button. Now, obviously, you can't find icon button like that. So you have to do, say, something like this, where we add a namespace, and we'll do controls. And now we can do the prefix to access. I don't know why the IntelliSense is doing that. Prefix to access the buttons. If we compile and check, you can see it doesn't currently have the style, but all we've got to do is change this control theme to the, I'm going to copy and paste that, the IntelliSense is not smart there. There we go. So now you can see we have a default style of 
buttons, which is what we want. You might be wondering why these are smaller. That's because we custom styled in app styles here. We selected on button, but now we have various buttons that implement on top of a button. So in order to style all buttons like this, we can change the button to colon is, which is a selector that basically checks if the entire control is a button or derived from a button. So if we have a base class of button anywhere in the chain, this is by choice. And if we did something like a radio button and you tab in, you can see if we tab in, the toggle button is a button. So by doing is button in our styles here, we're going to be styling toggle buttons as well and check boxes and all kinds of buttons. But for now, I'm OK with that because we want the overall theme to look the same. So we'll replace everywhere where there's button with is button. And if we've done that correctly now, which I think that's all of the styles. And we go back to here and build. Hopefully the icon button now looks identical. There we go. So you've got two completely identical buttons. The top two are icon buttons. The bottom two are normal buttons. And all we've done is cloned the button effectively. We've made an identical clone. So this now is a complete identical clone to uh, the button template. But now we can alter anything we want in here. And you can see why that part content presenter in the styles is needed. Now we take a look at the actual code for the button. You can see inside of the content, it puts a content presenter with the name part content presenter. And then inside of that, it binds the real content. So that explains why our styles, when we're styling buttons, have to have this forward slash template and then content presenter, because we need to style onto the content presenter. One thing before I go forward that has always bugged me, and I don't know why people don't seem to do this, but when we want to use the icon button, I hate this kind of prefix, this XML prefix for the definition. It's a super easy way to get rid of this. So instead of having to define it here all the time, if we take a look at the Avalonia docs, it even tells us that the XML namespace definitions, we can simply specify like this. This is how they are specified. So if we want to add our own, all we've got to do is add this definition here. But there's no need to do our controls. We can just use the Avalonia one. And all we need to do is chuck it somewhere. So let's chuck it in the app. It's got to be above namespace, otherwise it won't work. Control dot on that. And now in here, what it needs to be is the back to process three dot controls, which is our namespace for this. And you'll notice if we move this below, say a namespace, it's grayed out. It won't get used. It has to be above the namespace. And this has to be the actual namespace you would have used when defining it at the top namespace here. Now, if we remove that prefix, we should find the button and we no longer have to do that silly colon C or C colon. It makes it look a lot more stock. So this now looks like a proper Avalonia button, not a custom one we've made. Now, an icon button is no good without an icon. It's just a button, as we can see. So what we want to do for that is add a styled property. We just type styled property tab. We'll call this icon text. Press enter. Oh, let's try that again. Style property, icon text. Press enter. Type is string. Press enter again. Now we can, in the icon button, do icon text, and we can insert some icons here. We'll pull them out of here. Doesn't really matter. Let's use that and that. And now, obviously, there's nothing here because we haven't edited the content yet. So this is what we need to edit. Instead of binding content to just content, if we get rid of that. Open up this. And now in here, we can put the content we want inside the button. So the first thing we need to do is do content uh, presenter dot content in order to actually set the content this way. And then that is always a data template. And now finally, this is the actual thing we want. So all we want is to take one of these, paste it in. And if we just get rid of this is visible, remember, we've got to re-implement this afterwards. And the content now here, instead of being a label with echo and content, we can either replace this and allow them to insert uh, any content they want, 
which I think makes sense. Otherwise, they're going to be stuck with a label, whereas they could insert anything else with an icon. So I think what we'll do here is change this then to the content presenter. And we finally bind the content of this to the content. And the data template type is just an object. It can be anything, basically. And we don't actually need the content because we have already got the data context. So it's just literally the word binding. And I think that's it. If we compile that, we should now see an icon, even though it's fixed. Oh, there we go. We've got data template. So we've got content. Oh, sorry. I've put content, not content template. And we actually need to remove that. And content is template and content. We want to override the template, not the content. There we go. Much better. So now we've got the content template set, not the content. You can see we've now got the icon. And the last thing we've got to do now is bind this to icon text, which is on the icon button as a styled property. This would be quite a complicated binding, except in Avalonia, we have the really cool way of just doing a CSS style binding. So let's just say parent icon button dot icon text. And we just need to put that in a binding, obviously, not on its own. And it's not the hash, is it? It's dollar. There we go, dollar. And now you can see it's bound already to the icon text that we've put here. So if we put a different number, you can see this one disappearing down here and changing as we change values. Let's see if that now works in the main view. So we want to get rid of this actions one for an icon button. Horizontal alignment stretch, just the same. Class is active, all the same here. And the only thing we care about is the content we'll have to put inside the button like we did. Just because we want this to specifically fade. So that's the only reason we still have to do this label. Because we want to keep the icon, but fade the content. So we could maybe integrate this ability into the icon button at a later date as well. And now we can set the icon text to this. So we can get rid of all that. And now an icon button can simply have icon text. And does that now work? No. So the action is missing the icon still. Yet in the preview, it's working. Ah, I know why. We're in a resource dictionary here. So we've made a resource dictionary, which is how they work. And we'll need to add that to the app. So in here, so the way we do that, is resource dictionary inside here? I think we want to merge to resource dictionary. Uh, resource, oh, resource dictionary dot merged resource dictionaries. There we go. And then inside here, we can now finally put a merged resource. So it's a bit of a funny syntax, but this is basically just how you include um, resource dictionaries. In this case, it's in controls and icon button dot xaml. That then will include the icon button content template all across the app. And hopefully, there we go, the icon's now back. So instead of uh, the buttons like this, they're now like this, which is much shorter. That isn't as impressive as if you go to, say, the settings page. And we're going to change all of this, like release license from all of there. And we can just do icon button. We can set the icon text to this. And we can just get rid of that, release label, delete all of the inside, and just put a content of that. So now the release button is an icon button, but a much cleaner format. All we have to do is specify icon text and change button to icon button. That cleans up the XAML, and that's what we want. So next up, I'll just go through all of the page and swap anywhere we have a button uh, with an icon button where it's needed. So... Other than that release, we've got this folder. The folder one actually isn't an icon button. It is just a plus on the folder. So that one doesn't need to be there. But for now, I'm just going to remove the inner label with the ACO font and just put content for now. I think until we get that ACO font alignment bug fixed, forcing all the buttons to have an inner label, I'm not too fussed about, considering they look very similar to ACO. So we'll just do the content for now on the buttons. 
and once this bug with the alignment sorted this will naturally fix itself and we just change the font family of buttons to echo otherwise we'd end up with this offset here like this versus just using a font that's very similar and aligning correctly for now so we have this button done this button done and there's these five buttons here so same principle exactly what's there change the button to icon button do icon text copy this in do content and copy this in and then just delete all of that and close off and that's all we're going to do for now on all the others that's all of them on the settings page done and now they're super clean and much shorter and that's the main menu all changed as well for now we're leaving these labels in and we're binding to the side menu expand just so we can maintain this expand and collapse function so let's just build this now and make sure everything's still working oh maybe not unable to cast object of label to main view model right that is something to do with the fact that the content of the icon button is a label and it's going to be this binding to is visible so this main view model is expecting the data context to be the main view model which it should be and we've copied the button so it, uh, i know why so we've changed the content template from binding to a content template so it's automatically just exactly what it is to now specifying our own Mm, there's a few ways of fixing this. I don't know whether we change. Has this got a data context? No. Has this got a data context? No. Okay, so we'll just do it straight in here. Content presenter's data context, so that'll be the label, is expecting it to be a main view model. So it's the data context of the parent. So we'll just do the binding and we'll use the dollar parent icon button dot data context. That'll fix the data context. But now it looks like the binding on the content is now lost because it's now bound to the data context, obviously, and not the content. So we'll just do the same thing on here. We'll just do another uh, parent icon button dot um, content. So it's whatever the content is. I believe that's right. right. There we go. So I think that's looking right. Let's just double check. No, I still want something wrong here. Uh, content presenter is that meant to be just be content control? There we go. Yep, that now. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> I forgot to change all the icons once I changed them all. I left them as uh, the same icon text, but yeah, that's now working. It's collapsing and expanding, and we have icons that are working. So I just need to fix those icons back up, and that is that done. And that's all those icon text now fixed. We have the menu back to where we wanted it.